Hey guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog, and in today's episode, I'm happy to introduce our new software for IP cameras, Dingino. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're jumping into a topic that's been in the works for a few months. I'm really excited to tell you all about it. The earliest episodes on this channel were all about hacking embedded devices. Specifically, we started with a cheap webcam that for whatever unknown reason was built using a very capable MIPS-based system on chip and putting Linux on it. Why? Because we can. And I have a thing for little Linux boxes. That started me on a strange journey and a bunch of other interested folks heard that same call and we started working on increasingly more complex projects. This is where I got introduced to the OpenIPC project which purports to be an open source firmware replacement for proprietary cameras. With a few basic mods to that little webcam, we were able to add a USB Wi-Fi module and turn it into a pretty fun little network camera. But things were not all sunshine and roses. We suffered from a host of problems, including frequent crashes. Now being an open source project, you're able to help develop, test, and contribute back, and everybody benefits, right? Well, if you saw my previous video, Why We Fork Open Source Projects, you probably know where I'm going with this. It turns out that the open source part of OpenIPC is best described as a life support system for a proprietary closed source application called Majestic. The other points we made in that video also apply. Go watch it if you haven't already seen it, and I won't go too deep into them here. The result is this project was a prime candidate for a fork. That was a few months ago, and at this point it's hardly fair to even call it a fork. We've long since removed any remaining parts of OpenIPC code, and in fact, they've even started taking some of ours. It's all fair to do so, of course, as all of our code is licensed as free software. As of today, I would say that Thingino is feature competitive with OpenIPC. They have a few things we don't yet, and we have a few things that they don't, but Thingino is entirely open source. For now and the foreseeable future, Thingino is focused on the Ingenic T-Series platform, the same sort of chip used in that little webcam, and also very popular in commercially available IP cameras from brands you've heard of and can easily find at online retailers. I'll be adding some videos on specific models really soon. My desk is littered with cameras right now. We've got about 16 devices today with out-of-the-box support, several of which can be upgraded to our firmware without soldering or even taking the camera apart. We also have support of several bare camera modules if you want to start from scratch rather than a commercial camera. So let's go over a few questions folks have. First off, why would you want to run open source firmware on your camera to begin with? There are several reasons to do so, and I did a whole video on that topic which you can see here, but most of it for me boils down to trust. Can you trust Google, Amazon, Wise, or any number of smaller, no-name brand manufacturers. When you add one of these devices to your network, you're granting the manufacturer, their partners, their subsidiaries, and anyone else they choose full access to your network, as well as to any video and audio that's able to be captured by the camera. Without picking on a single vendor, you'll have no problem finding articles documenting instances of this happening pretty much regardless of brand. And that's just cases we know about, where the vendor gave that access out intentionally, ignoring all the times hackers have exploited their mechanisms that they use to monitor and control your devices, and were able to watch and record you without anyone knowing. Thingino aims to give you as much functionality as possible without relinquishing ownership of your data. After all, anything recorded by your camera, which you paid full price for, and which you deployed in your private residence or business, that's your data, even if these vendors act like it's otherwise. Some of the features already work great. Some are still works in progress. But the important thing is that you can view, you can audit, you can edit, you can test, you can contribute, and yes, you can even fork Thingino. All our code and development is done in the open. We don't have to ask you to just trust us. Or in the case of OpenIPC, just trust our random faceless developer that gives us a closed source binary application we blindly ship that totally doesn't have any back doors, wink wink. And it's not just security. If you really think about it, 
you'd have to be a little bit nutty to actually rely on these companies to provide those services. Last year, you may have heard of a case where an Amazon delivery driver claimed to have heard a racial slur from the smart doorbell at a person's home, and Amazon completely disabled their account. The accusation turned out to be completely false, but all of their smart devices stopped working for over a week as he battled with Amazon to get his account restored. Then there are the numerous cases of vendors going out of business, or maybe even worse, removing features or just ending services for devices while continuing to sell new ones. Surely that only happens with these no-name brands though, right? Well, here's Google turning off your older Nest devices. Oh, but that's just a one-off. Well, no. Here's Netgear announcing the end of support for several Arlo branded cameras. I'll highlight more of these cases in other videos, but suffice to say, this is a regular occurrence. I suppose the second question will be, how functional is Thingino when compared to those proprietary offerings? Well, obviously we're still a young project, but we also have a lot of momentum. We're ready to go for basic camera features, with a few formats of streaming, and saving to an SD card, but there is for sure much more work to be done. Things are changing rapidly, so instead of a list of things that don't work yet, that may work when you see this video, I'll just go over some of the features that do work today in May 2024. When you boot your freshly installed Tengino device, you can configure it either by putting your Wi-Fi credentials in a text file on an SD card, or you can boot it without an SD, it'll create its own Wi-Fi network that allows you to add your credentials from your browser. Once it's up and running, you'll be prompted to set your own admin password. This is for the root user and can be used to access the camera via web or SSH. Once you're logged in, you're greeted by an information and status page. You can access the other features and configuration options from the menu. If you've used OpenIPC before, you'll notice right away that there are a lot fewer things you need to configure before being able to use your camera. This is, of course, because OpenIPC builds are a generic fit, where Thingino can target a specific camera model and preset all the details ahead of time and give you a great experience right out of the gate. Particularly noteworthy here is the preview page, where you get a one frame per second display right in your browser, and can control the various functions of the camera in real time, including pan and tilt, night mode, black and white or color, enabling or disabling the lamps, controlling the infrared filter, and other things your camera might support. Of course, that's just the preview page. The stream in its full shine is available through the RTSP protocol, which can be played or recorded by nearly everything, but more protocols are also in the works. You can also record the stream locally to an SD card. Now, not all of the features are able to be configured through the web interface just yet, but as I mentioned, we're moving quickly. This obviously is not a full feature list, but you can see most of the basics are ready to go. So question number three, I think, would be, what cameras are currently supported? Well, we have about a dozen right now, and that number is increasing as we go. We support several models from WISE, WANS View, and more. Some of the devices can be flashed just from an SD card, some can be flashed over USB with a little disassembly required, and some others will actually require using a flash programmer. I'll be doing videos on the individual models I have in my hands starting today, but if you're in a hurry to get started, check out the website, or even better, join us over on Discord. Our camera configs are built by specifying the hardware modules and adding config options, so devices that are able to be supported can usually be added pretty easily, if you're willing to put in a little effort. Again, the best resource for this is our Discord channel. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this video. I've got this pile of cameras, and I'll be making install videos on them right away, so make sure to subscribe to get those. And if you're interested in IP cameras, embedded security, hardware hacking, or just little Linux boxes, we'd love to have you join over at our Discord. We've got all sorts of folks of various skill levels and experience, and we always have a good time. Until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.